Welcome to episode six of Tracker for Beginners. Today, what I wanna look at is how we can create our own data fits to examine whatever kind of data we're looking at. Here we're looking at uh, what looks to be a pretty good sine curve um, from this experiment where I've got a mass oscillating up and down on a spring. I've got my axes set up here. I've got my mass auto tracked here. I have given my mass the name Piper as a thank you to one of our Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you Piper to our other viewers. If you're interested in supporting this channel, you can see the links in the description below. Um, and what I've got here is my, my sine wave data. And so in an experiment with a spring like this, I would like to be able to get out the period, meaning the distance from peak to peak, and the amplitude, so the vertical distance from peak to trough. And I could just measure these values and take an average, uh, but there's a little bit of variation in them. I'd like it if the computer could do it for me, and I would like to be able to uh, you know, trace this out using a sine curve. So what we're gonna do is right click on our graph here and click on analyze, just like we did in the previous video. That's gonna open our data tool here. So we'll maximize this. Um, this obviously is not a line. So I'm gonna look through the pre-made uh, options here. And uh, we're gonna click on sinusoid. And what we're gonna see is that sinusoid doesn't do a terribly good job of fitting this uh, because we're missing a key element on the pre-built sinusoid function. So we have our amplitude A here. We have our angular frequency B, that's equal to two pi divided by the period. And then we have our, our horizontal offset C here. So that's gonna determine how far away, how far off this thing is from being a real sine curve in terms of left and right. But I don't have a variable added onto the end to give me an up and down offset, to give me a vertical offset. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own function. We're gonna click on Fit Builder here. And I shouldn't have to start from scratch here. So let's start out with a clone of the sinusoid functions. So we're gonna click on clone. And we're gonna click on sinusoid. That gives me a new version of the sinusoid here. It's, it defaults to sinusoid one. So we're gonna rename this sinusoid with offset. And now what I need is another parameter. So my A, B, and C here are my parameters so far. And actually, I don't like those names. Let's give these the names that they actually are. So let's call this one the amplitude. Let's call this one the angular frequency. And let's call this one the phase. And then we'll add on here our offsets. We'll name this one offset. There we go. So I've got amplitude, angular frequency, phase, and offset. Now I've got a, a red box here because my function no longer knows what A, B, C, what A, B, and C are. So we're going to replace A with amplitude. I can just click on the variable name down here. Uh, instead of B, I'll have angular frequency, and then C, I'll have the phase here. And you notice this process is very similar to when we defined our own potential energy. Uh, we got to name whatever parameters we wanted, and we got to click on those parameters to put them in here. Um, so that's very handy. Um, it's, it works exactly the same way. And now we need to add to this the offset. Cool. So the equation looks a little longer. It's still got the same number of stuff in it. Uh, we're just giving it names that make sense. So I've got amplitude, angular frequency, phase, and offset. So we're gonna click on close here. We've got our sinusoid with offset selected. And now unfortunately, I was trying this earlier, and unfortunately when you click on auto fit, uh, it does not do a very good job of fitting with this. I think there's just too many parameters for it to play around with, and it's got sine of one thing times and times the independent variable, and you're adding another thing. So this is a bit too much for a Tracker to handle on its own. Tracker can do fine auto fitting with uh, lines and parabolas, etc. But this is a little bit too much. So we're gonna have to manually assign these values. And this is just a process of trial and error. There's not really a magic surefire way to do this. You just keep fiddling with these values until the fit, the thing in pink here, matches up with the data points. So let's start out, for example, with our offset. So the offset is how vertically uh, uh, far up and down this thing has been moved from zero because sine by itself oscillates between negative one and one. So amplitude times sine oscillates between negative amplitude and amplitude. And we want to be able to move that up by an offset. So I'm going to look at where the center point seems to be. And it looks to be right around 0.23 here. So let's put in a 0.23 
And now my curve has gone out of the bounds of the window. I see that here, the fit lies outside the plot area. So let's see if we can find this thing. Let's change our vertical maximum, let's say to one maybe. Ah, there it is. It's gotten shifted up here. Uh, basically, we're in the middle of an oscillation, it looks like. Let's try fixing the frequency next. So well, I can't really measure the angular frequency off of here, but I can get an idea of the period. So if I go from 0.2 to 1, I see that my period is about 0.8, going from peak here at 0.2 to a peak here at 1. So let's open up a calculator really quick. And let's see what we get if we take 2 times pi divided by 0.8 gives me a 7.85. So this thing should have an angular frequency of about 7.85, not times 10 to the minus four. Oh, there we go. Now this is looking a little bit better. All right, let's go back to auto on here. Um, so now what I need to do is work on the, I suppose I need to work on the amplitude of this thing. Yes, yes, the amplitude is definitely too big on this. So let's try cutting this thing in half. So instead of 0.23, let's make this like a 0.1 maybe. Okay, let's make that a little bit smaller then. Let's try a, actually I suppose I could get an intelligent uh, guess off of this. So if I go from the center here of 0.23 up to the top here of 0.275, that's what about 0.04. So let's go with a 0.04 here. All right, we're looking better here. Uh, we've got about we've about got the amplitude set up correctly. Now what I want to look at next is my distance from this peak to this peak. So how far short I am vertically here is about the same as how far short I am vertically here. So let's stretch out our amplitude just a little bit. Let's try 0 0.045 maybe. Yeah, okay, that's looking pretty good. Except now I see that this trough is a little bit too low, so I need to push the thing up just a little bit. So we'll try 0 0.0, excuse me, 0 0.23, maybe 0.235. Little too much, 0 0.232. Uh, okay, that's looking better. Now let's decrease the amplitude a little bit, 0 0.044 maybe. Cool. So this is basically the game that you play as you keep adjusting these things based on what you know they do, right? So I know amplitude determines how far this thing stretches in the vertical, and I know offset determines how far this thing moves up in the vertical. The next thing I need to do is move this thing to the right a little bit, and that means adjusting the phase. And if you want to move to the right, you have to subtract a number, which means this number should get more negative, I think? Yes, that's right, I, I, oh, that always trips me up in my head. Let's try a negative six then. Okay, pretty cool, we're actually coming up on two pi here, so I could actually try a zero instead of a two pi. Ooh, we are pretty well matched up here in terms of the offset, I think. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Part of that is I started at the midpoint of an oscillation, so I gave myself a little bit of an assist there. But that's basically the process you would go through. You would define your own custom fit equation, and then you could adjust the values of the parameters here until you get your, your fit to match your data. And basically you keep trying this until it looks pretty good or until you get a satisfactory value of this RMS dev uh, here. Now, what is a satisfactory value? That is, of course, up to your instructor. Uh, so I'll leave it to you to, uh, to contact them about what they expect there. So there's a little insight into how you can make your own custom data fit and get it to fit to your liking. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.